Hey, welcome to the PHP 2 course. We're looking at milestone number six, and in step one here, we're going to look at the overview of the milestone requirements. So we'll look at a report and see how it's supposed to look in your finished product. So let's take a peek here at the finished product here for one of my reports. It's not the exact report you'll make, but pretty close. First of all, you'll see that somebody's logged in, and it says that this person is an admin account, and so their role level is number one. Since he is an account for admin, he can have this admin menu. And let's go to the reports page. Now the sales report that I created is similar to the one that you're going to make. You notice I have a calendar picker, so I can choose a date for the begin and the end date of my report and generate the report. This tells me that there are 105 orders in my report and it is tabulated, so you can see each page goes in increments of 10, or you can do increments of larger numbers. Each order number is listed by his ID, and then if you click one of the links for the date, it will take you to the details, and you can see exactly what this person ordered on this date. Let's switch now to the page called Reporting Requirements and see what you're going to have to create. So we are going to create a similar report. Instead of orders, it is about sales on different products. So we'll be sorting by product IDs. So we have a uh, first requirement is about the administrator role. And so only logged in admin, admin should be able to see the menu and should be able to show the report. We had a title in the front of the screen. Uh, let's see, what else did we have? Uh, pick some nice uh, common themes for your coloring. And uh, here is the uh, 10 row limit. So we have tabulation in our table. So the details of what this report will look like uh, are slightly different than what I've created here for an example. My example here just showed the orders. Yours will show actual products. Let's start by looking at what I did for the nav bar. And so in the nav bar, we have a section for menus called the, uh, the drop down section. And you can see that I have checked to see if the role of the person is one, which in my data dictionary requires that person to be an administrator. And if it is a one, then that menu appears on the screen. And if they are not a one, then of course they can't see it. You can see that the third item on my drop-down menu is called Orders Report Creator PHP. So let's go take a look in the Views folder and you'll find Orders Report Creator. The reason why it's in Views is because it shows up on the screen. It's a view. So the uh, screen that you're looking at right now is Generate a Sales Report. It's a form with two date pickers. So what does a date pick form look like? And so if you look at the input, it is type of date and automatically HTML compliant browsers will show a little calendar. Now you can see I've also ch chosen a bunch of bootstrap things. So I've got the uh, form group, uh, I've got the uh, usual button formatting for bootstrap so it looks consistent with the rest of the design on my page. The action that we're going to look at next is my process orders report PHP which is inside handlers. So let's look in the handlers folder and we'll look at process orders report. Pretty simple here. I have a couple of dates that I picked from their form. So date one is the begin date. Then the orders business service is needed and the business service uh, classes. So once we have the uh, function here called get order between dates, then we simply create an array of orders and then we display it. So there's another include file called display orders report. Let's go take a look at this file here, display orders report. Now I did some customized uh, CSS work at the beginning. So an important part of my formatting and scripting is are these lines here. So these came from a, a plugin called data tables. As you recall from an earlier lesson at datatables.net we borrowed some code here and we created a tabulated uh, table here, just like you see in the screen here. So I took the basic design that they used and incorporated it into my website. So you can see this script here is the uh, result of their work. Then I simply went to the uh, for loop and echoed out each row of my order and put it into the columns on the table. So yours will probably look very similar. Let's switch back here to process orders report. How are you going to get the uh, SQL to run uh, select between two dates? Well, you're going to have to create a new method. So let's go see where this came from, get orders between dates. 
if I go into my order business service here, I should see a new function here. Order business service. So you can see in my order business service uh, class here, I have uh, an object here or a function called get between dates. And it is relying on another function that is in my database service. So go into there and you will see a select statement that will pick all items between two numbers. So you might have to do some research to create that. So now I'm looking at my order data service and you can see that getting an order between two dates is indeed a function. So do some research on figuring out how to do a select statement when you have a minimum and a maximum value and you should get a function that works properly. So when you're all done, you should see a report that we can generate and show everything in a nice table like you see here. Now just to emphasize again that your requirement is to do a product sales report. My report is slightly different using an orders report, but uh, very much similar in the design and the structure of the files.